I'm gonna teach you how to easily visualize supplements in Blender. And this is a great way to make some money because of how easy it is to do. And if you wanna learn more about how to master Blender and become a professional 3D artist, then check out my new Blender course. The link is in the description. We're gonna delete the default cube and start with a cylinder, which is going to have 16 vertices instead of 32. We're gonna use a subdivision surface modifier on this anyway to make it nice and smooth, so we don't need too many edges to start with. Now in edit mode, you're gonna delete the faces at the top and the bottom, then go side view and with control one or two, you're gonna add one or two levels of subdivision surface. And now you're gonna extrude the top like this and scale it down a little bit. Also extrude the bottom downwards and scale it down a little bit. And you're gonna need some supporting geometry to tighten up these corners. Now you can play around with this a little bit and create the type of shape that you like. At the bottom here, you have to extrude the base inwards and you can also extrude it upwards again, scale it down a little bit and fill it. This is what the bottom of the container is supposed to look like approximately. Now up here at the top, you're gonna extrude this upwards a little bit more, then extrude right click and scale up a little bit and lift it up a tiny bit. And then just continue to extrude this upwards on the Z axis and scaling it up and down to create the lid. Now this is all supposed to stay connected because we want this to still be wrapped with the plastic wrapping, which you get when you purchase this container. Then at the top, you're gonna extrude and scale inwards and extrude a little bit further and you can fill this with an end gone. And this is gonna be the rough shape of the bottle. Now we just have to play around with the proportions a little bit and try sliding some shit around until it looks a little bit better. And you can now go up here to object shade smooth and just like that your containers finished. Now we're gonna start applying labels and materials and all this other shit. Now I've got this label right here that I've designed myself in Canva. I'm not gonna sit here and show you how to do that in this video. If you want to learn how to do that, then let me know in the comments. We can make another video to talk about how to make labels for supplements and whatever else you're creating. And if you're doing this for a client, then they're definitely gonna send you the label that they've produced themselves. And if you don't got a client, and if you don't wanna make one yourself, you can probably just go online and type in protein powder label, and you're gonna find a bunch of different pictures which are gonna be exactly what you're looking for. So we're gonna switch over to the shading workspace. Over here, we're quickly gonna change the HDRI because I don't like this one. And we're also gonna reduce the world opacity because otherwise this shit is gonna hurt your eyes. Add a new material. And here's the easiest way to apply a label to a cylindrical object like this protein tub. You're gonna go up here to edit, preferences, add-ons, search for node and check this box right here called node wrangler. Now select this principled BSDF node and press control T. That's gonna give you a couple of nodes which you can use to load in and map a texture onto this object without UV unwrapping. So click on open right here and you're gonna open up the picture that you wanna apply to this. Once you do that, you're gonna see a shitty version of your label applied to your object. And now here's how you can tell Blender how to map this correctly. First over here, you're gonna switch from UV to generated. So instead of having the UV plugged into the vector, you're gonna have generated plugged into the vector. And over here in your image texture node, you're gonna change from flat to tube, and that's going to project this texture from this invisible cylindrical object, which is going to perfectly wrap it around our 3D model, as you can see right here. Now we're still gonna have to make some minor adjustments. For example, we have to align this text with the lid. In edit mode, you're going to select all the geometry at the top of this bottle. You're gonna scale that up a little bit so you have a little bit more space for this text up here. And then you can stretch out this texture on the z-axis by just reducing the scale here in the mapping node for the z-axis. You can set this to something like 0.99 and try playing around with it a little bit. In this case, 0.98 is probably gonna work a little bit better. And before you know it, your label is going to be perfectly projected on the object. And you can look around and see that everything is in place. Now you can reduce the roughness to make this a little bit more shiny since it's supposed to be plastic wrapping. And now let's quickly set up an environment. Now the environment's going to be extremely simple. With shift A, you're going to add a plane, scale that shit up, then take this edge in the back and extrude it and lift it upwards a little bit like this. Now select this protein powder tub and make sure that it's standing on top of the plane. You don't want it clipping through the bottom. Once you've done that, now you're gonna use your number pad to go to front view, and then you're going to align your camera with your view. If you don't have a shortcut for that, you can go up here to view, align view, and click on align active camera to view. Now we're still gonna adjust the camera position and some camera settings later on. We're just placing it here so we know approximately what this shot is going to look like. We're also gonna press G and double Z. That's going to allow us to move this a little bit closer by sliding in on the local Z axis. Now switch over to rendered view. In my render properties, I'm going to switch the render engine from EV to cycles because that way this is going to look a lot better. And now delete this default lamp right here. Place the 3D cursor onto this object with shift S cursor to select it. Then press shift A, add a new light and we're going to use an area light and lift that above the scene like this. Now I don't want to have this shitty gray lighting coming from the environment. So I'm going to go over to shading, switch here from object to world and set the background strength to zero. This way when you go to render view, your environment is going to be completely black 
and the only lighting that you're going to have in your scene is going to come from the artificial lights that you create yourself. So now we're going to go to lamp settings and crank the power of this lamp. We're going to give it a light blue color like this. And then while the 3D cursor is in the middle of the bottle, we're going to change the pivot point to the 3D cursor. Now we can rotate this lamp to the side, press G and double Z to move it along its local Z axis. And we're going to place it around here somewhere so that it has light coming from the side. And there's going to be a shadow to the left of this bottle. Now switch the pivot point back to medium point and scale this up a little bit. That's going to make your lighting a little bit softer and your shadow is not going to be as sharp. Now we're going to select this floor and this wall in the background. Go to materials, add a new material. You can name that whatever you want. I'll name it floor and just reduce the roughness on that a little bit. So you have a little bit of reflection coming from the floor. Now you're going to need to add quite a bit of power to this lamp if you want this to look nice and bright. I'm going to try something like 1500 watts and then later we can adjust this if we have to. Now with shift A, we're going to add another area light here in the middle. Lift that up again, increase the power and give it a light blue color. And the purpose of this light is going to be mainly to give us a nice reflection from the bottle. So with zero on the number pad, we're going to enter camera view, set the pivot point to 3D cursor again, and then rotate this around the Y axis so you can bring it closer to us. And you want it to be somewhere around here. So it's still above the bottle, but it's shining light from this direction that you can see right here. Now that we have the basic environment set up and a little bit of lighting as well, switch back to material view, select a bottle and duplicate it with shift D, right click and throw it into the background like this, enter camera view and place this bottle to the side somewhere like this. You're going to scale this down a little bit. So it looks like it's far in the background. And you're also going to rotate it. So it's kind of like this, Then you're going to duplicate it again and bring it over here to the other side where you're going to rotate it a bit more. So you have one over there as well, facing a different direction. Now I want to make sure that both of these are below the top of this bottle over here in the front. And I'm also going to select my camera and lower it down just a little bit, rotate it around the local X axis. And in the camera settings over here on the side, we're going to increase the focal length. That's going to zoom in a little bit and make this bottle look bigger. We want it to cover almost the entire screen. Next, we're going to create a strawberry. Here's a really easy way to make a strawberry. You don't want to download nothing. You don't need no fancy geometry nodes, nothing. You're going to place your cursor somewhere. Let's step aside for this. And with shift A, we're going to add a cube. Then with control three, you're going to add two levels of subdivision surface. Select the face at the bottom and lift it up a little bit and scale it up a little bit. Then extrude it down like this and scale it up a little bit again. And then you're going to extrude it again towards the bottom to make it a little bit pointier. Now you're going to have to adjust these edge loops to make it a little bit wider, probably. And just try to get the rough shape of a strawberry. It's going to be something like this. Now in the modifier properties tab with control A, you're going to apply the subdivision surface modifier. Now we're going to have to get rid of some of these edge loops on the side here. So you're going to select one edge loop around the top like this, skip two edge loops and select another one, skip another two and select another and go all the way down, selecting every third edge loop like this. You don't need to go too far. You just need to select a few like this, then press X dissolve edges and I'll select an edge loop on the side of the strawberry like this, then go up here to select open up select loops and click on edge rings. And you want to make sure that the geometry here is evenly balanced. So you're going to have to use your loop tools for this. If you don't got your loop tools, then go up here to edit preferences, add ons, search for a loop and check this box right here called loop tools. Now in edit mode, you can go W loop tools space. And if you have to make this a little bit smoother, you can also go W loop tools relax. And now you're going to have mostly squares on the side of your strawberry instead of little rectangles like you had before. So now in the modifier properties tab, you're going to go add modifier generate and you're going to click on decimate switch to unsubdivide and set the number of iterations to one that's going to leave you with a pattern that looks like this now apply this modifier in edit mode you're going to select all the geometry with a and with control b you're going to bevel it you want to make it so that the bevel is a little bit thinner than the face that you get in between the bevels now you have to be in face select mode for this to work because when you do this in face select mode the bevels are going to remain selected and not the faces in between if you do this in vertex select mode then when you apply the bevel, the faces in between are also selected and that's going to give us trouble. So make the bevel in face select mode, press control I to invert selection, then go up here and set the pivot point to individual origins. And then you're going to press E to extrude, right click to cancel the extrusion and scale this down a little bit. Now in object mode with control one or control two, you're going to add a subdivision surface modifier, make sure to go to object shade smooth. And while these faces are still selected, you're going to press alt S to push them inwards a little bit. That's going to create the holes that you need for the seeds on your strawberry. Now, 
in wireframe view, you're going to press S to scale and shift Z to scale only on the X and the Y axis without the Z axis. Then you can inset these faces just a little bit with I to create an extra edge here and then press E to extrude right click to cancel Alt S to inflate this a little bit. And that's going to give you the seed. Now you can scale down the faces a little bit more. And now you got a strawberry filled with seeds. Now, while you still have these faces here selected, you're going to press control plus that's going to expand the selection to only the seeds. You're going to go to material properties and add a new material, assign it right here, name this material seed. Then with control I, you're going to invert the selection, add a new material and assign it to the selection. This material is going to be called red. And then we're going to switch to the material preview and we're going to set the base color for this material to red, obviously reduce the roughness. And for the seeds, we're going to create a light yellow color. Now we also need a couple of leaves up here at the top. So you're going to select a face at the top middle of the strawberry and with shift S, you're going to snap the cursor to select it. Then with shift A, add a plane, scale it down. From top view, you're going to take this edge and extrude it out with control click, scale this edge down a little bit, then do the same thing one more time and scale it down a little bit more. You can lift this up, then add this edge and lift it up as well. Add a subdivision surface modifier, and this is going to be the first leaf. You can still adjust the shape of this if you want to. For example, you can add a loop cut this way and use Alt S to push it downwards a little bit, but you're going to have to make it so that the back part of this leaf is exactly over the middle. Now from top view, you're going to place the pivot point to 3D cursor. That way you can duplicate this and place it on a few other spots like this. Just make sure to adjust the shape of every leaf individually because otherwise they're not going to look natural. You want them to be a little bit busted up so they look like all of them have a unique shape. You're going to have to have a few of them sticking upwards. Some of them are going to have to be smaller. Some of them are going to have to be bigger. Some of them are going to have to be crooked like this. Of course, you're going to have to duplicate these a couple more times like this. You're going to have to invert some of them across the Z axis so that they're going downwards and just keep duplicating these leaves and adding a few more here and there until you got a bunch of leaves and this is going to look more realistic. Now you don't need 6,000 leaves and you also don't have to worry about this too much because this is going to be blurred in the background. So now you're going to go to object shade smooth and it might be a good idea to extrude all the geometry right click use alt s to give it a tiny bit of thickness and then add a subdivision surface modifier if you want to make this smoother. But again, you don't have to do that. This is a tiny detail which is hardly going to be visible. We're also going to add a little cylinder with 12 vertices here in the middle. This is going to be the stem where the strawberry is attached to the fucking plant. So you can delete the face at the bottom of this cylinder and then take the one at the top and bevel it with control B. And now we got to create a material for these leaves. To do that, let's go to the shading workspace, add a new material and name that leaf. In that new material, you're going to add a noise texture node and you're also going to need a color ramp node. Plug the color from the noise texture into the factor of the color ramp and the color from the color ramp into the base color of the principal node. Bring these two markers a little bit closer together. Change the black color to some sort of green like this and the white marker to a different shade of green, which is going to be more like this. The closer you bring these together, the sharper the transition between the colors is going to be. And I got to increase the level of detail. You got to increase the roughness, perhaps change the scale, adjust the position of these markers until you get something that looks a little bit better. Now with shift A, you're going to add a bump node, plug the color from the color ramp into the height of the bump node and the normal the bump node into the normal of the principal node that's going to give you a bump map as you can see right here we're going to have to reduce the strength because otherwise it's way too powerful and now select the leaves and shift select the strawberry control p parent the leaves of the strawberry and if you want to take the strawberry to another level here's what you can do with shift a you're going to add a noise texture in the strawberry material then you're going to add a bump node and once again you're going to add a color ramp node plug the noise texture into color ramp color ramp into height and the bump map and the normal output from the bump map into the normal input to the principal node. This is going to give you a bump map on your strawberry, which can be used to make it look a little bit more natural. We're going to have to reduce the strength all the way down to something like 0.2. You can increase the detail and decrease the roughness. This is just going to make your strawberry look a little bit more natural and organic. Without the bump map, it looks a little bit too smooth. But if you add the bump effect, now you got these little wrinkles and bumps and it looks a lot nicer in my opinion. And now you're going to take this strawberry and place it somewhere in your scene like this and scale it down. Go to camera view and you want to have one over here. We're about to duplicate this and make sure that you select both the leaves and the strawberry when you duplicate it. Then with shift, you're going to duplicate this and place another one over here somewhere. You can rotate that a little bit and scale it down if you want to. Then place a few more over here on the other side like this. And let's also take a few more and place them over here in the background. These are going to be a lot smaller than the ones in the front. Just try to scatter them randomly all over the place. So it looks like an explosion of strawberries. Now in this case, you probably notice my background is blurry. And here's how you do that. You're going to have to select your camera and go over here to camera properties, open up the depth of field section and check the box here to activate it. You're going to have to adjust the distance here so that you're focusing on the 
bottle in the front. That way the bottle in the front is going to be sharp while everything in the background is going to be blurry. You're also going to have to adjust the f-stop value which is going to control how blurry the outer focus stuff is. So the lower your f-stop value is the more blurry the outer focus stuff is going to be. And if you increase it, then the stuff in the background becomes sharp as well. So you got to find a nice balance. I think something like 0.7 works pretty well. And before you know it, when you go to rendered view, your scene is going to look something like this. Now, you're probably still going to have to adjust the lighting and the environment and the colors and the shadows and all this other shit. You're going to have to play around with the reflections in your objects to make them look a little bit nicer. But you now have a setup which you can use to render other supplements. And let me give you another trick to make this look a little bit better when you render it. First to render this, you're going to go over here to render properties. You can set the number of render samples to something like 128. That's probably going to be enough. I'm using the cycles render engine and then we're going to go over here to output properties. And I don't need this to be a full HD image. I'm just going to render with 1280 by 720. But if you want to render full HD, you're going to type in 1920 by 1080. That's going to give you full HD, which means full screen on your monitor. Then you're going to go up here to the render menu and click on render image. And now you got to wait a couple of seconds for this to render out. This is a good time to open up TikTok and check out a couple of videos of some bullshit. And once this is rendered, you can just close this because we're not going to save it yet. You're going to switch over to the compositing workspace. Make sure that you have a viewer node added into your scene like this. Then plug the image from render layers into the image input of the viewer node and also into the image input of the composite node here. This might not work unless you check use nodes up here in the top left corner. And now you can set up a couple of effects to change how this image looks. For example, with Shift A, we're going to add a brightness contrast node place that in between render layers and the viewer node now you can increase the contrast here or reduce the brightness if you want to that's gonna make everything look a little bit more crispy and nice you can also add a hue saturation value node to change the color of your scene if you want to do that you can also increase the saturation or decrease the saturation if you want to make it pale but I don't recommend you do that and this is the easiest way that you can make your image look a little bit nicer there are a bunch of other nodes that you can use here to work on this image I don't like to work on post processing inside of blender but this this is an easy way that you can do this right now. If you want me to cover this topic more extensively, then let me know in the comments below because post processing is one of the most important parts of getting a good render. And now if you want to export this image, you have to open up this window down here and switch to the image editor. Then using this little menu, you're going to load up the viewer node. That's going to give you the same result down here. Now you can go to image, save as, name this, whatever you want, click on save image as. And if you want me to make a tutorial for how to make an animation for this as well, then let me know in the comments below and I'll see you in the next one.